Chinook and coho salmon are two species of Pacific salmon that occur in both saltwater and freshwater. Both species are anadromous, which means they live in an ocean or large lake for most of their life, but they migrate up streams to spawn. In the 1960s, both coho and chinook salmon were introduced into the Great Lakes in an attempt to control the invasion of a small fish called the alewife. Chinook and coho salmon are related to other species in the Salmonidae family, including sockeye salmon, pink salmon, grayling, and many species of trout. Rainbow trout, brown trout, and pink salmon were also stocked into the Great Lakes system to supplement the sport fishery. The only native members of the Salmonidae in the Great Lakes region are the lake trout, brook trout, and grayling, which are currently being restocked into their former native range in Michigan. The salmon stocking was a success at establishing and controlling the alewife population, and it created a famous salmon fishery in the Great Lakes that attracts anglers now from all over the world. After spending much of the year in hundreds of feet of water, the salmon start heading toward shore in late summer. By September and October, crowds of anglers set out in boats large and small and line up along the shores of tributaries and harbors, looking for a chance to reel in an incredibly strong fish that regularly tops 20 pounds and 40 inches. Before the fish get into the rivers, they tend to be very silvery, but chinooks will turn more brown and cohos will turn pinkish as they begin their spawning runs. Both species can develop a strongly hooked jaw called a kipe. Inside their mouths, Chinooks have black gums, while the gums on a coho are white to light gray. By late October, most salmon have run up the streams they were born or stocked into in search of spawning habitat. In some areas, the salmon can find cold, clear streams with gravel bottoms, and they can successfully spawn and reproduce. The fish will scour out a spot in the gravel with their tails to create a clean nest called a red. This wears down the skin on their bodies, and it'll start to turn white or flake off from the damage. In the Great Lakes region, many streams are too warm or too silty for salmon to successfully reproduce on their own. In order to keep salmon runs going, Great Lakes states operate hatcheries to collect eggs and milt from adult salmon as they run up the streams. The eggs and milt are mixed in a bucket of water which fertilizes the eggs, and those fertilized eggs will grow the next generation for stocking. Salmon die after spawning, usually at three or four years old. During the run and even after they die, the bodies of the salmon provide an important food source for everything from eagles to bears, raccoons, crayfish, and insects. The fish are often dragged far into the surrounding forests and contribute valuable nutrients to the forest ecosystem as well. Pacific salmon also provide a crucial food source to human communities throughout the Pacific Northwest, Alaska, and parts of Eastern Asia. Wild salmon eggs hatch in the spring, and juveniles will make their way back downstream to the lake or ocean, feeding on insects and small crustaceans along the way. Adult salmon grow quickly by feeding on small fishes, shrimp, and large insects. They don't feed much during their spawning migration, but salmon will strike lures at this time out of aggression, or feed on eggs of other salmon to increase the chance of success of their own eggs. Salmon rarely hold still. They're constantly swimming or facing into the current to keep water and oxygen flowing over their gills. Popular salmon lures include spoons, inline spinners, crankbaits, and eggs or spawn sacks under a float. Most anglers use medium or medium heavy rods with 10 to 30 pound line. Whenever they can, salmon will seek out cold water. They require a high level of dissolved oxygen, and cold water generally holds more oxygen. As fish are moving toward shore, they'll often stay in deeper, colder waters, especially during the daytime. Use heavy lures, weights, or deep diving crankbaits to get down to this colder water. In the ocean, major predators of salmon include whales, sharks, dolphins, and seals. In the Great Lakes, the primary predator of salmon are sea lampreys. Sea lampreys are not native to the Great Lakes and arrive the same way as the alewives, through the Welland Canal that goes around Niagara Falls. These eel-like fishes have round mouths full of sharp teeth. Their rasping tongue scrapes a hole through a fish to feed on its bodily fluids and blood. Some fish will die from this encounter with a lamprey, and others will survive with a nasty scar, usually located on the side of the fish. The salmon is an amazing fish, and it provides an exciting fishing experience as summer transitions to fall. As a kayak angler, salmon fishing is a challenge and highlight of every year for me. Good luck fishing, and thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.